Hey, hey guys, what's going on? We are going to see if we can get this dune buggy running and driving again after it's been sitting for at least 10 years. So stay tuned. All right guys, let's take a walk around this thing and see what we've got. This is a VW based rail buggy. Um, just run of the mill dune buggy like you used to see on the roads all the time. Um, this is a Beeline Pack Rat chassis, which is a very good chassis. Pretty popular as far as I understand. Um, but it's got a 31 1050 tire on the back and it just has some regular street tires from Walmart on the front. And it does have a bus transaxle in it. It's a three rib, has a Weber progressive carburetor on it. And the most wild thing about this is someone has swapped in at some point a Toyota distributor. So it's got electronic ignition on it, but I have no idea what that came off of, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, so uh, CNC brakes, but uh, as you can see by all the powdery residue down here, they are frozen, they're solid. So uh, that's something we're definitely gonna have to get fixed, but it does have a hydraulic clutch on it, but it's frozen too. So uh, let's start digging in. First thing I wanna do is uh, see if I can't get this thing at least to fire over because of course it's been sitting so long the battery's dead so we had another battery out of that old jimmy over there that had been that had been kept charged but i put it in here and it's just as dead as the other one so i brought a battery from home and we're going to stick that in there and see if we can get it to fire over but first let's just start cleaning all the stuff off of it so i can so i can work on this thing Let's get dead battery number two and dead battery number one out of the way. Neither one of them's got a handle. Dang it. What's that? Oh, insurance paperwork and stuff from 2011. <laughs> My dad, he seems to think that this thing is a, uh, he seems to think that he's driven it in that 10 year time frame, but I'm not sure. Uh, with the condition of the brakes and stuff like that, it kind of makes me wonder, but I mean, I'm not gonna say he's wrong because for all I know, he may be right. But uh, anyway, uh, it's been off the road for quite a while. The last time I personally have seen this thing out of this shop running under its own power was probably about 10 years ago. I originally purchased this buggy about 13 years ago out of South Carolina and sold it to my dad shortly after that. Um, he drove it around for a little bit, but like I said, I, I really haven't seen this thing move in quite a long time. So the good part about this is that he was always wise enough to put ethanol free fuel in the thing. So the carburetor didn't get ruined from the ethanol fuel. But uh, anyway, but he said, oh, that tank's got fuel in it. and 
I pulled the cap off of it and boy howdy it is ripe but there's no fuel in it so I don't know if it's evaporated off maybe that fuel cap is vented or if it just leaked down and evaporated out of the carburetor I, I, who knows all I do know is is that it doesn't smell like old ethanol fuel it smells like old ethanol free fuel and I guess it's a good thing that there's none in here so we don't have to worry about pumping any of that bad stuff into the motor and I don't have to deal with disposing of it either so right side to that huh so uh, let's get this battery out and we got the good old super start it's been on my trailer it's been in the LTD it's been on several things or in several things so I guess it'll fit in here too maybe <laughs> yep, there we go oh crap uh, he's got some wood blocks in here oh crap oh. let me just take that out take two oh. there we go Whew. getting old is rough Whenever I put that other battery in here, it was so dead it wouldn't even turn lights on. So that was pretty bad. So, uh oh, where'd my other one go? Oh, there we go. Yeah, wiring definitely needs to be cleaned up on this old thing. Okay. All right, before we go doing anything, let's check the oil. Not well, good, it's not overfilled. That tip. I don't smell any gas, so that's good. So my theory of the fuel leaking in, well I guess it couldn't actually because the fuel carburetor, the fuel carburetor, <laughs> I mean the carburetor is actually a little higher than the fuel tank. So I, I think that the gas just must have evaporated off. So, all right, we know we got oil in it, so that's good. All right, let's see what she does. I bet that fuel pump. What y'all want to bet? The fuel pump, good or bad? Been sitting it as long? My bet is bad. Let's see here. <laughs> I can't believe that thing works. I can't believe it. Oh goodness. <laughs> All right, make sure we're in neutral here. I believe we are. Let's see what happens when I twist the key. Hey, cool. It turns over. Good. All right. Got his no ethanol gas can here. So uh, let's pour a little bit in here and see. Whew. But again, it does not smell like ethanol fuel. So Thank goodness for that. So we're probably not going to have any problems with the carburetor. The only thing I'm worried about with the carburetor is if the accelerator pump has uh, dried up and won't work anymore. But I mean, we'll just have to deal with that if it happens. So pour a little bit in there. I don't want to pour a whole lot in there. He ain't got a lot in this can. see any leaks let's see oh the petcock's turned off so I guess it must have evaporated out of a vented cap well it doesn't look like the cap's vented who knows all I know is the gas is gone all right let me see if I can reach that petcock up under there turn it on uh oh Ugh. 
maybe I should have tried that before I put gas in it. Right, let's try these. There we go. All right. Now she's on. So now I guess we get to see if the pump actually works instead of just making noise. Now my dad is pretty confident that this thing ought to just fire right off and I am of the opinion that he's right. So uh, let's turn the fuel pump on and see what happens. Fuel pump quieting down. I feel it pumping through the through the hose. I don't see any leakage. Uh oh. Let's give her a little squirt. Oh, let me get my flashlight so I can see down in there. Let's see if the accelerator pump works. Oh yeah. <laughs> it works. Fuel the accelerator pump works. Cool. I bet this thing's gonna fire up. He was right. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> that's the first time I've heard that thing run in, like I said, probably 10 years or more. But uh, now we got to worry about the brakes. Now that we know that it runs. Thank you. Oh, I need to turn that petcock off too before I forget. So let me do that. And then we're going to start pulling out the brake master cylinder and the clutch master cylinder and also the clutch slave cylinder. I'm hoping that I can find some rebuild kits for them so we don't have to buy brand new stuff because that stuff gets kind of pricey. But um, rebuild kits are kind of cheap. So, But I need to find out what size bores all of them has before I can, uh, before I can order rebuild kits. So let's get to doing that. I wound up having to get a pair of pliers and pulling this cap loose but look down inside here yeah so I'm pretty sure that the clutch master cylinder is not going to be any better than that so let's get to pulling these things off and at least seeing if I can't get the stuff out of them and measure what size boards we've got because I don't see it marked on here anywhere what size they are so let's do that Ew. Ew. that's like gravy gross <laughs> and let's take that one off At least this thing has been stored inside so that's good so all these fittings aren't completely rotten and seized up onto the tubes that makes things a lot easier
disconnect the brake. Uh oh. Just had a little sparky spark there because I forgot that the battery is hooked up. Let me go ahead and unhook the battery. All right, now we shouldn't have any more sparks. And those are undone. Hmm. Well, okay, the top one's going to be easy, but that bottom one looks like that may pose a challenge with the pedal assembly being installed. There we go. Sound like it broke it loose anyway. That's bad. That's really, really bad. Yeesh. All right, let's get the other one out. See if we can't get the slave cylinder off. There we go. There we go. Loose now. We have got the master cylinders off and draining and boy these things are rough I don't know what this corrosion stuff is but I, I'm sure it's not good for you so I'm trying to well I'll just stuck my hand right in and then again didn't I? so uh, anyway so now I'll take them apart and hopefully get the pistons out and I can look at the uh, look at the seals and see if one of the empty rebuild kits will work but I've got to know what size the bore is for these things so uh, that's going to do it for today and next time you see me I'll have these things apart hopefully and we will hopefully be honing them out and putting new rebuild cylinders or putting rebuild kits in them so stay tuned for that all right guys i cleaned up all the brake master cylinder stuff and to be honest with you i was pretty impressed with how nice the internals still were on these things the rubber seals and all were not cracked they're really still pliable um, here's the piston and spring c-clip now this is the main or what i'm assuming is the main seal i guess you could say this is the one that goes 
out front and creates all the pressure but it's still nice and pliable uh, I don't see any cracks or any scratches or gouges on it and unfortunately it seems like CNC and Neil which were basically they used to be the same people uh, I think one split off from the other one or whatever and anyway um, nobody makes rebuild kits for these things so that really stinks but at the same time I mean this stuff is still in really good condition so I think I'm gonna just try and put it back together after I've cleaned it all out um, and see what we got I mean the worst thing that happened is it doesn't work well I, <laughs> I guess the, the actual worst thing that could happen is they'll work until I really need them to work and then they won't but I'm going to give them a stress test before I go do anything in this thing but anyway like I said all the seals are still nice and pliable um, one thing I found interesting was on this piston this big helix cut in to it for I wonder what that's for when that, there's nothing that goes in it um, I don't know that's just I just thought that was kind of kind of interesting uh, let's see here I didn't film taking them apart and cleaning them up because I mean nobody wants to sit around and watch that but I did it on this one here where I took it all apart and reassembled it and it feels like it'll hold pressure and uh, uh oh I need some I need to put some brake fluid in there I need probably need to re probably need to take this back apart and so yeah don't let's, let's cut that part out <laughs> So, uh, oh, brother, okay. So, anyway, uh, I went ahead and took these things apart and cleaned them all out. The bores were pretty, I don't want to say they, they weren't rough, but they had a lot of crap in them. So, I just used this little uh, cylinder hone and cleaned them all out. And we're going to stick this one back together and I'm probably going to take this one back apart and because I never I put this one together with no brake fluid so I'm probably going to have to redo that one because it's a little bit sticky but anyway um, like I said I didn't film the taking apart or the disassembly and cleaning process because I mean nobody wants to watch that but at least I can show you how it goes back together so let's get on with that all right, once you get the brake fluid inside to lubricate the bore, spring goes in first with this little piece facing up. Then your seal. Well, it'll go in with the cupped part facing down. This is what presses the brake fluid. And it's a good design too because if you think about it if this is inside of a bore like this and you're pushing from behind it's going to naturally make this part swell out and seal tighter against the bore plus the brake fluid pressure on this side of the seal is also going to push out so that's how you get such a good seal it's just basically just it's a good little design so let's get this in there and we can push that in with the piston so it goes straight down and feel it seat on that spring there we go now now we have to get the push rod and put it in place our washer retainer whatever you want to call it put that in place and then our snap ring finagled in there there we go yeah good 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 so all right there's that one I'm gonna oh uh, I don't want to handle that little boot that goes on here right now because my hands are pretty dirty with a well, pretty greasy with the um, brake master seal or brake fluid, rather. But 
you see how this one's kind of stuck so this one needs to come back apart and because I put it together dry and I really shouldn't have done that so let's do that job again flies buzzing around me in here these are the worst pair of pliers I've seen okay there we go but they still got it done so. all right uh hmm Let's see if I can't. Yep, that one's stuck in there pretty good. Let me go. Let me go get some air and push in here and pop this stuff out, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, guys, that's gonna have to do it for this episode unfortunately we've run across a problem that i really didn't anticipate having this buggy has always had a little bit of a clutch problem where it's kind of hard to get it in gear it wants to grind and all that stuff like that and i'm just wondering if what we've got going on now is just an evolution of those problems because uh well let me take a step back here and if you look up here I've only got one of the master cylinders on and that's because when I first started putting them back together I was under the assumption that they were both going to be fine but one of them the brake the one I was using for brakes it kept kind of hanging up a little bit and it seemed like the more I messed with it the worse it got so I just called it on that one I mean brakes are important even though I goof around about safety a lot brakes are a must-have so I'm not going to risk it I mean Willwood makes a replacement uh, brake master cylinder that'll bolt into place of that one for like a hundred hundred twenty five bucks so I mean my life's worth more than that so that's what I'm probably going to do but I don't want to go spending that money on this thing right now because we've got other stuff going on but we did get the clutch working so you can see here when I mash the clutch here the slave cylinder works like it should but the bad part about that is is the clutch is not disengaging so if it's in gear put it in gear right now if I push the clutch in we should be able to roll this thing but we can't and Wendy got some footage of me yesterday um, Wendy got some footage of me yesterday trying to uh, start it with it in gear with the clutch pushed in and it just um, and I think that there's some also some footage of of it running and me trying to put it in gear and it, it, it'll jam into gear but it just choked right off so I don't think I should be able to do this by hand for the clutch so I would think all I'm pressing against is the spring pressure right here so I'm thinking something's going on with the diaphragm because I don't think I should be able to do that by hand uh, that's gonna you know that's that's gonna make me have to pull the motor out and even though it is a an easy thing to do on these Volkswagens I mean four bolts a few wires take the skid plate off or whatever you know it's you know they come apart very easily but at the same time uh, if the clutch diaphragm is bad then that's another hundred bucks that I got to spend on top of you know another hundred hundred twenty five for a brake master cylinder and if I'm going that far I'm going to go ahead and put a steering brake in this thing because I'm actually going to use this thing off-road I'm, I'm not going to put it on the road I don't really have no interest in driving on the street but a woods buggy would be awesome 
So woods buggy is just about mandatory to have a steering brake in there for me. So um, that's another two or three hundred dollars. So we're starting to get in the neighborhood of five, six hundred dollars of parts just to make this thing go. And I'm 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 gonna stop right now because the truck over there, that truck is priority number one. I'm not doing any filming on that truck because it's just a little bit of a personal thing for me. If you go back and watch the last video I put out, um, I kind of explain it. But I mean, there's my dad's got some health issues going on and I want to get that thing going. But I know you guys didn't tune in to a dune buggy video just to hear me ramble on about a truck, but the truck's got to get done first. My thing is that when I can get the truck where it will run around and yard drive, then I may you know, then I may come back to this. But you will see this buggy again in the future. Um, it may be a month, it may be six months, I don't know, but you'll see it again because I definitely want to get this thing fixed and I definitely want to get it out on some trails before the end of the year. So I hope you guys will tune back in with me and go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, and especially leave comments because comments are supposed to help the channels out the most. So if you guys would do that, hey, um, that'd be great. So thanks again for watching and I hope to see you next time.